Hello, friends, and welcome to Summit and the fifth Sunday of Easter. We just keep rolling with the Easter season. Jesus Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. I never get sick of saying it. How's your Easter been? Have you run through all your candy yet? Do you still have some of the jelly beans, black jelly beans? Never liked black jelly beans. That's a, that's a little fun fact about me until I got older, then loved black jelly beans. You a black jelly bean person? Let me know in the comments section below. Hey, this week's readings, we have one of my favorite, but also one of my, the more confusing lines in scripture. So let's just get into it because we're going to hone in on the gospel today. But the readings this week, lots of good things. Acts of the Apostles. If you haven't guessed it by now, throughout Easter, we, we work through the Acts of the Apostles, the stuff that happened after Jesus rose from the dead in this early Christian community. Fun little fact, if you didn't know already, Acts of the Apostles, written by the same author as the Gospel of Luke. So Luke the physician wrote the Gospel, and he wrote the Acts of the Apostles. It's sort of like the part two, the sequel, to this Christian community and the history of how this all got started off with the church. So in the Acts of the Apostles this week, we have some people upset that they are being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Apostles get together and they realize that there is a new need that they have not yet discerned how to serve, so they anoint these people as deacons to serve this community and make sure that they're taking care of those who are in need. One of those people is Stephen, who eventually becomes the first Christian martyr. But we see this unique movement where the community sees a need to a new time and a new place, and they respond to it by finding people who God has already called to fulfill that need. Moving forward to the psalm this week, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you wonderful little antiphon. I find that this psalm, the settings for it, can just be wildly crazy and vary all kinds of ways. Some very somber, some very exuberant, some very exciting. Hopefully you get something that just tickles you this week with this psalm response. But Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Let's come back to trust in a little bit. Second reading, we're still in the first letter of St. Peter, and he's talking, uh, he's doing what he's been doing. He's quoting some more scripture from the Old Testament, but this one's about the cornerstone and Jesus being this cornerstone. Let's pause there for a second because a lot of us probably aren't into architecture. And like we've been talking about the past few weeks, actually, there's some things we say, which we can really actually take for granted. Jesus is the cornerstone. There's a church called Cornerstone down, you know, the road on the corner, actually, which is interesting. What is a cornerstone? In architecture, it is a ceremonial stone that is laid down that can have a practical purpose, at least it did millennia ago, where you would lay this stone down and it was the stone from which everything else was a frame of reference. It was built around it. So it had a ceremonial purpose, sort of like a groundbreaking. Once that stone is laid, the building is about to be built, but all the other stones are laid in reference then to this cornerstone. Now, if you've ever seen a cornerstone on a building, sometimes it actually is in the corner of a building, usually not the first stone laid. And it has a ceremonial aspect to it. The dates that the building was constructed are usually on the cornerstone. Sometimes things are put inside of it, um, things that are important at the time of the building's construction that sort of uh, have a, a sentimental purpose. And then when the building's demolished, those things are taken out. But the cornerstone, really as St. Peter is writing about it and as it was understood in ancient architecture, was the ceremonial first stone laid by which everything else then was laid around it. It became the frame of reference for the whole building. And Jesus in the gospel, we go back actually in time to Jesus before his crucifixion in this week's gospel in John 14. Let's drill down on this for a little bit. Jesus is talking about he's the way to the Father. We've got a classic line in here, uh, Jesus saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. For a long time, this is embarrassing, but I'll share it with you since we're all friends. I misquoted this as I am the way, the truth, truth and the light. But like Jesus, I'm the way, the truth and the life, not the way, the truth and the light. And Jesus is the light, but he's not saying it here. And no one ever corrected me. And it was embarrassing the day I found out, I was like, I've been misquoting that for years. And no one ever was kind enough to say, hey, that's not the actual passage. So little fun fact, tip for this week, Correct your friends. It's kind. It's not mean. Just say, hey, like, that's, that's wrong. And then make sure that people don't, you know, wind up in a situation where they're embarrassed for years of misquoting a famous line of sacred scripture. Back to the readings. No one has seen the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. And you've seen me, so you know the Father. So Jesus goes through this whole length about how he's the way. And they misinterpret him a little bit. Like Philip says, you know, show us the Father and that will be enough. And Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Uh, Thomas says, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus says, I'm the way. 
Jesus as the cornerstone is the thing that we need to found our whole life on. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And when we put everything in our life in reference to him, we build something solid. And Jesus even said this in the gospels, you know, build your life upon my words and it will be like building your life on rock. So St. Peter's calling us to put our lives uh, in relation to Jesus as the cornerstone. Now, when we do this, it doesn't make us all the same person. I think that's a very real fear that I have, that sometimes when we hear, you know, make your whole life based around Jesus, we have a stereotype in our mind of what that looks like, or I have to get into ministry, or I have to act or be a certain way. But in the first reading, we have this group of people who were called to a unique ministry at a unique time. You are like that too. You have gifts and talents that maybe right now you don't know how those serve, but the Lord does. And if we build our life in relation to Jesus, when the time is ready for those gifts and talents to be used, we will know and we'll be able to step into that. There are things that you will do in this world that the need isn't even there yet, but it will be, and you're gonna be able to step into that. I think even in this unique time in human history, how many people have stepped up with the gifts and talents that God has given them who have Jesus as the cornerstone of their life, but you wouldn't necessarily look at these people and say, well, that person's in ministry or that person works for the church, uh, but those people are founded on Jesus and it's what is allowing them to serve in this unique time in history. So we build our lives on Jesus, who's the way, the truth, and the life. Now, at the end of the gospel, this is one of my favorite lines, but also a really challenging line. Jesus says, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I'm going to the Father. Jesus tells his disciples that they'll do the things that he does and greater works than these. Well, what did Jesus do? I I mean, he cast out demons, he healed the sick, he raised the dead. And in the Acts of the Apostles, which we're working through this Easter season, that stuff happens. The apostles do raise people from the dead. They do heal the sick. They continue to cast out demons. And it can be easy to look at that passage and stop there and say, well, that's what Jesus means is we're supposed to lean into these big charismatic spiritual gifts. But we also know that Jesus did something even greater. And it comes at the beginning of 1 Peter. 1 Peter's talking, uh, the the first letter St. Peter's talking, and, and he says, you know, be built into a spiritual house to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. The sacrifices in the service we offer in our lives vary in wild ways. But Jesus, ultimately, the greatest work that he did was dying on the cross and rising for life. And that one-time sacrifice is sufficient for us. But when we unite our spiritual sacrifices to that cross, they become something beautiful. We do the works that Jesus can do, but even greater works than these because we're able to go out and share those things. Jesus ministered at a specific place in a specific time for a specific reason that was eternal, and that's important to note, but we get to go out to all of these other places in new times and in new histories and in new ways to continue to do the work of Jesus Christ. And that happens through our spiritual sacrifices. That happens through our service. And that happens in the moments of dying and rising in every day life and uniting those things to Jesus and allowing his grace to be abundant. Because we can bring that grace by our service and our sacrifice through Jesus, who's the cornerstone of our life, to all areas that we enter into. And that is a great gift. And those are great works to be done. So brothers and sisters, is this fifth Sunday of Easter. Go out and do some great works. Place your trust in Jesus as the cornerstone and amen. You will do the works of Jesus and even greater works than these because Jesus goes to his father. The Holy Spirit comes to you and empowers you for the work at hand. Enjoy your week. I will see you back here next week on Summit.